Hi, and thank you for joining the webinar. Um, just to confirm, this is a Making Touch Digital uh, presentation for DP65 as well as AX. And this is presented by SA Global. Um, my name is Michael Lee, and I'm one of the project managers within the service delivery uh, for SA Global. And we also have Ian Johnson, who is our functional consultant. So if you have any questions specifically, please do put them onto the right side of the webinar and we'll then go through those um, at the end. Um, so just so that you, if you don't know who uh, SA Global are, um, we're a uh, Microsoft Go, Go partner uh, and also the global Microsoft partner of the year uh, within uh, Microsoft Dynamics 365. So to go for the agenda today, so initially I'll just go for a quick introduction of what Making Touch Digital is, uh, is about and just give that background and how Microsoft have actually uh, provided additional software to, to cater for this requirement. Uh, the second part is then going through uh, in two sections, D365 and AX2012 R3. Uh, I'll go for the minimum requirements, what we need to do with regard to the developer hub within HMRC, how to plan, configure and also test um, the, um, the HMRC uh, making touch digital um, add-in and then we'll then have a short walkthrough uh, on the video just to go through what then happens after we've configured the actual uh, application. The second part is then to go through AF 2012 R2 and below and we'll be talking about exporting um, the VAT reports out into Excel and then and then utilizing bridging software to actually send the data over to HMRC. And then the fourth session would then be to go through any future updates which we're expecting from Microsoft and then a question and answer session as well. Okay. So making touch digital is is there so that rather than having our customers uh, send the VAT uh, return out uh, either manually by hand or logging on to HMRC's uh, portal. Um, this now needs to be sent um, digitally uh, through either a bridging software partner or through the application directly uh, starting from April 1st, 2019. Um, there are exceptions, which uh, I'll go through one or two uh, later on as well, where essentially if we have any specific VAT returns that need to be sent out with uh, data from the 1st of April, those then need to be sent out digitally to HMRC and um, not uh, keyed in manually. So what have Microsoft done? So Microsoft released an update uh, for DP65 as well as A2012 R3. Um, they haven't released it for A2012 R2 and below, but those are things that we need to uh, try and address uh, within this presentation as well. Um, so with regards to DP65 and A2012 R3, there are quite a few minimum requirements that are required. So with DP65, um, from versions 10.0.1 onwards up to 10.0.3, um, to ha have the actual update, you have to have a minimum build number. So these are specified just at the top just here. Um, to find those out, of course, again, we would actually have to do a few uh, checks within your system, just do a, a quick audit. And then from there, we can be able to confirm what updates are required within your existing system. For AS2012 R3, um, there are two specific hot fixes which are required. So we've confirmed that there, is, there are no CU uh, uh, requirements at all. So if you're on AS2012, R3 um, a standard or up to CU13, which I believe is the latest version, uh, you can still be able to uh, update these hotfixes. But again, as with any hotfix, we, we need to do some various auditing just to make sure that there's uh, uh, there aren't any issues. So once the actual uh, updates are then applied onto your environments, we would then have to go through and uh, ask your, your, yourselves actually go on to the HMRC Developer Hub. So the Developer Hub actually provides uh, you with a test account and then you then have to register.
And that's literally on your side what you would have to do. So uh, we would actually help with the planning of this. So we would, as I said, audit the various, um, your, your environments to make sure that's there. Would help with any of the installs. Um, and then of course, with any specific hotfix that are required, any particular configurations which are required as well. So we've actually created some uh, documentation based on that, which I'll go through in a little bit more detail later on. Then of course, assist with the UAT and the testing, uh, so that, um, and it's fully regression test so that it can go into your production environments. And then from there, we can then be able to prepare for go live and then um, help with any go live support as well. So from there, as we said, we've got a pre-configured uh, configuration document uh, ready to uh, be used. Um, this will hopefully uh, speed things uh, up uh, very, very quickly. But not only that, this also provides you with the documentation necessary to, for your change control process to then push uh, this into your production system. Same again, uh, we have a templated UAT uh, plan. Uh, so it actually goes through the various steps which are required. And again, this is uh, utilized for, for your team so that you can be able to push that through, get that uh, signed off. And then again, that's your documentation to be uh, to move the actual application over to Go Live as well. Okay, so I'll just now start the video uh, just to go through a short walkthrough of what happens after uh, the test as well. And then what um, this is presented by Ian Johnson, our functional consultant. This is a short demonstration on how to submit a VAT return from Microsoft Dynamics 365 to HMRC. This application that we're in at the moment has already been configured to uh, link to the HMRC test application and the VAT100 report has already been generated within D365 just as it would normally be done prior to submission. To submit the VAT return there are a few steps that have to be completed. In the tax module, under inquiries and reports, we have electronic messages and electronic messages. Click on that to open it. And we have two options here. The top one is for production and the bottom one is the one we are using, which is for testing. In order to submit a, a VAT return, we need to create a new message and the message has to have the action uh, create VAT obligation request. Click OK to create the message. On the new obligation request, we need to fill in the from and to dates. The uh, HMRC test application works with the second quarter of 2017 as it states. So I shall fill in April. 2017 to June 2017. We're now ready to send this obligation request to HMRC, which we do using the send report option here. The action is pre-populated with test retrieve VAT obligations. Let me just click OK. <laughs> That brings up a dialog box showing that fraud prevention headers have been included in the message. Click OK to continue. And we receive a response from HMRC with a new VAT return message. In order to submit the VAT return, we need to attach the uh, VAT100 information to this new VAT return message. So selecting that message, we click on collect data and the action this time is populate VAT return records, which is what we want. Click OK. And what that does is 
attaches the VAT return information for that period to this message. The next uh, part of the process is to update the status of this message, which we do using this update status button, and we update it to ready to generate VAT return. Click OK on that, and the uh, status of the message changes to ready to generate VAT return. Uh, the message item is up, updated to a status of a to be reported. <coughs> In order to send the uh, message to HMRC, the next point is to actually generate the report, which we do using the generate report option. And the action this time is generate file for submission. Click OK on that and the status of the message changes to generated fat return and the item status changes to reported. <coughs> the uh, VAT return can be viewed using the original document option to, on the message item. Uh, and the, the uh, actual data is now attached to the message as a message um, as a, an attachment. <coughs> the final uh, part of the process is to actually send this return to HMRC, which we do using the send report option. And the action this time is a test submit that return. Click OK. Uh, we get a final confirmation that we are happy with the information that we're going to send to HMRC. Click OK on that. And we get the fraud prevention headers message once again. Click OK again. And that completes the process. We've now got a message that has completed that return and the message item has changed to a status of submitted. OK, so for A2012 R2 and below, um, unfortunately, Microsoft haven't provided a specific um, update for, for this. Uh, so for all of our customers, we would have to ask them to use the bridging software um, uh, uh, route. So within HMRC, they've actually provided um, a, all the partners who are actually uh, able to pro provide this bridging software. And there are actually 159 and counting right now. But what we've done is that uh, we've uh, reviewed um, a short list of these, uh, but it's not a recommendation, but hopefully this will assist uh, your teams actually decide on which uh, bridging software partner to choose. Um, this specific Excel spreadsheet again is, is available to yourselves and uh, hopefully that would, uh, that would give you a bit more insight into what they can do as well. So to export to Excel, so utilizing the existing VAT100 report, um, all our clients can now be able to export um, the data out to Excel. But um, so in 2012, uh, R2 and above, as well as in D365, it's actually relatively simple, but we've provided a small, small piece of documentation based on that. Um, but with AX 2009, there are a couple more steps uh, just because there isn't an export to Excel function within AX 2009, so you'd have to do a save as HTML, and then from the save as HTML, then that is then converted into uh, Excel. Both of these pieces uh, of documents are also um, going to be handed out to, uh, to, to all of you, and again, hopefully that would assist you with uh, getting this implemented for your business. So future updates. 
So what we do know at the moment, there are of course quite a few exceptions um, within the making tax digital area, but one of the exceptions which Microsoft and HMRC will be covering is to do with group VAT. So what group VAT means is where you have multiple legal entities within your um, environment and they're all using the same VAT registration number. So if they're doing that, okay, unfortunately, if any of the customers um, that, that are within that scenario, they'd have to use the bridging software route um, as of today. But Microsoft are also uh, de developing um, their solution for that, and we're expecting that in Q4 2019, uh, and that would be ready for D365 as well as AX 2012 R3 as well. So once that is available, then again, another piece of configuration would then be required to get those up to speed. Okay, so that concludes my um, short presentation on Making Touch Digital. I hope you found it useful. And again, uh, if you do have any questions, please let me know. Thank you very much.